Hey, good morning, everybody. My name is Jeremy, and I have the privilege of serving as a senior pastor here at First Baptist Church of Zealand. We're so thankful that you have joined us today for our live stream. We have a very special morning for you. But before I get to that, I just want to share a couple of quick uh, announcements with you that, that will help you engage with what we're doing and in our ministry as it, as it stands right now in this very kind of crazy time that we live. The first thing I want to let you know is um, on Wednesday, we're going to be having our midweek Bible study gathering. And that's something we do on Zoom, which is an online thing. So if you are computer savvy enough, it's really not that hard. And we're happy to help walk you through it. If you want to join us, we're going to be studying Jonah chapter 2 this week. We had over a dozen people last week or thereabouts uh, gathered around their, their um, computers and their iPhones and their other devices to study the scripture. And so join us uh, this week. And if you want to know more about that, make sure you subscribe to our weekly newsletter. You can do that down at the bottom of our website in the lower right hand corner. Scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll find it there. The second thing is, is today is Palm Sunday, which means a week from now, we're going to be celebrating the resurrection. Now, we celebrate the resurrection every weekend, but this is kind of just a huge celebratory weekend for us. And even though we are not going to necessarily be together because we won't be having in-person gatherings for the next several weeks now, um, we want to uh, invite you back 10 a.m. right here on our live stream on our website, fbczealand.org, for you to join us as we gather and we celebrate what Christ has done for us. And it's going to be a triple header pastor morning. So look forward to that awesome time. Um, and the other thing I wanted to let you know about Holy Week this week is um, Passover starts this week and Good Friday is Friday night. Oftentimes we partner with some area churches to put on a Good Friday service um, and to gather and to celebrate and take communion. We're not going to be able to do that this year uh, due to the things going on. And so we want to still have a devotional available for you and we plan to do that and make it live for you on our website on Friday. So anytime Friday, you can go to our website and you can um, engage with us as we study Psalm 118, a psalm that Jesus would have prayed and sang as he left the upper room and as he gets ready to go to the cross. And so we invite you back for that teaching uh, this morning. And uh, before uh, I segue into our next uh, element, which is our teaching, I just want to say a, a few words of prayer here. And so would you join me this morning as we welcome the presence of God into our living rooms, maybe into our kitchens. Friends, you are not here by accident. God has brought you here and he has brought you here because he wants to teach you. And he wants to teach me what it means to love him with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And we can only ever do that with his help. And so we invite um, you into this process with us, but let's just celebrate that God is here with us. Let's pray. Our Father and our King, we know that where two or three are gathered, and I'm going to take the liberty, Lord, to say where two or three are gathered across this city and maybe even across this nation as we gather this morning, where we have hearts that are set upon knowing you, God, you meet us there and you teach us. And we say, blessed are you, O Lord, our God. You are King. You are sovereign. You are good. Thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you, God, that we can open your word. We thank you that, God, in the middle of chaos that surrounds us, uh, related to health, related to employment, God, you know all these things and you care for us. We don't have to fear because we can trust that you can both, um, that you both care about the situations we are in, and that you can do something about them. And so, God, we again this morning yield our lives to you. And God, we want to seek first your kingdom, your righteousness. Lord, thank you for these moments we have to open your word, to gather around your body broken and your blood poured out for the sins of all mankind. We bless you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, our Messiah and our Redeemer, we pray. Amen. Now, you have a very special opportunity this morning. We're sending you to our local lumberjack, our, our, our Pastor Tom, who is one of the best wood splitters you will ever see in your life. If you have a tree that needs to come down, I'm sure he'd be happy to help after the quarantine is lifted. Um, but we invite you into this teaching from the Vandenberg residents. Thanks so much for joining us today. Well, good morning and welcome to my home. I'm Tom Vandenberg, one of the pastors at First Baptist Church in Zealand, and I'm glad you can join me this morning 
as I talk about the Passover. The Passover is coming up. It starts at sunset this coming Wednesday. And I want to talk a little bit about uh, the background of the Passover and what it means for us as followers of Jesus Christ. Now, as we want to understand the Passover, the first thing we need to understand is slavery. Slavery is a terrible thing. God created man in his own image, and he created us to rule over creation on his behalf. And so we were not designed to be slaves. When people are slaves, then they lose their um, ruling over creation on God's behalf, and they come and are ruled over by the whims of an owner rather than serving God. And so the nation of Israel had been slaves in the land of Egypt for 400 years. They were treated with contempt. They were viewed as a threat by their Egyptian taskmasters. They were whipped and their children were killed because there were so many of them that the Egyptians were threatened by them. And so the nation of Israel cried out to the Lord for help. And the Lord heard them and he sent Moses to go to Pharaoh and to command Pharaoh to let his people go. And so Moses went to Pharaoh and commanded Pharaoh to let the people of Israel go and Moses refused. And so God sent a series of plagues on the nation of Egypt. So first he turned the Nile River into blood and then he sent frogs and lice and flies. Then he sent uh, pestilence over the Egyptian livestock and he sent boils on the Egyptian people. He sent hail and locust and darkness. And when Pharaoh wouldn't listen to any of that, he finally said, I'm going to send death over the land of Egypt. I'm going to kill the firstborn of every person in Egypt. And as the shadow of death gathered over the land, the Lord prepared for the deliverance of his people Israel. The passage that talks about this is found in Exodus chapter 12, verses 1 to 13, if you would like to open in your Bibles to that passage. Exodus chapter 12, verses 1 to 13. And I'd like to read that passage in your hearing. It says, Now the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be your beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak to all the congregation of Israel, saying, On the tenth of this month, every man shall take for himself a lamb, according to the house of his father, a lamb for a household. And if the household is too small for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next to his house take it, according to the number of the persons. According to each man's need, you shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. Now you shall keep it until the fourteenth day of the same month. Then the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it at twilight. And they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and on the lintel of the houses where they eat it. Then they shall eat the flesh on that night roasted in fire with unleavened bread and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Do not eat it raw nor boiled at all with water, but roasted in fire, its head with its legs and its entrails. You shall let none of it remain until morning and what remains of it until morning you shall burn with fire. And thus you shall eat it with a belt on your waist, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. So you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt on that night, and will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Now the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be on you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. Now you can notice in verse 3 of this passage that their preparations involved a lamb. It says, Speak to all the congregation of Israel, saying, 
On the tenth of this month, every man shall take for himself a lamb, according to the house of his father, a lamb for a household. Lambs rate pretty highly on the cuteness scale. They're small and white and fluffy. Before the shadow of COVID-19 passed over the land, I'd hoped to have a lamb with me here today. I wanted you to see its cuteness firsthand because it's actually a part of what's going on in the Passover. But the governor gave a stay-at-home order, and I am obeying that order. And so I have to make, make do with things that are available to me in my home. And so that's what I'm going to do. Well, desperate times call for desperate measures. And so I present to you a beagle in lamb's clothing. And uh, Tucker, uh, he's not a lamb, but he maybe shares something with a lamb. Maybe he's a little bit cute. Uh, we'll, we'll hope so, because that'll help uh, with our presentation if he's a little bit cute. And so we have our beagle in lamb's clothing. Now, you'll notice in verse 5 that the lamb is supposed to be without blemish. It says, Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. And so Tucker's disqualified on two measures besides being a beagle rather than a lamb. And uh, one of those is he's older than a year old. And another is he's not without blemish. So he has a cataract in his left eye. And so uh, Tucker wouldn't be qualified even if he was a lamb. But uh, nonetheless, uh, the lamb was supposed to be perfect. And the reason the lamb was supposed to be perfect is because it was a picture of a coming lamb that was going to be perfect. And then the people of Israel were instructed to watch the lamb for four days. And so in the first half of verse 6, it says, Now you shall keep it until the 14th day of the same month. And so we can remember that they, according to verse 3, selected the lamb on the 10th day of the month. And then according to verse 6, they kept it until the 14th day of the month. And so they had this cute little lamb, and they had it around for four days, and it gave them time to get attached to it. And then after four days of getting attached to that lamb, they had to kill it. And so the second half of verse 6, Then the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it at twilight. And so they would take a knife and they would take a bowl and they would slit the throat of the lamb and they would collect the blood in a bowl. Must have been incredibly difficult for them to take that knife and to slit the throat of that lamb. You know, animals have a way of insinuating themselves into our affections. Uh, Tucker's predecessor, Zeke, I remember when Zeke died. I don't cry very often, but that day I cried like a baby. Uh, just uh, really came to love that dog. And so the family, you know, they come to love that, that lamb and then, and then the lamb has to die. Why would God have them do something like that? And then beyond that, he didn't stop there. In verse 7, he tells them to do something kind of gross. He says, And they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the house where they eat it. And so they were supposed to take their bowl of blood and they were supposed to take hyssop, which was a bush, and they would take a branch of the bush and they would put it in the blood. And they'd go up to the house and they'd put it on the doorposts and they'd put it on the lintel over the top of the door. And after doing that, then they were instructed to go inside the house and eat the lamb and wait until morning. And so verses 8 to 11. 
Then they shall eat the flesh on that night, roasted in fire, with unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Do not eat it raw or boiled at all with water, but roast in fire, its head with its legs and its entrails. You shall let none of it remain until morning, and what remains of it until morning you shall burn with fire. And thus you shall eat it with a belt on your waist, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. So you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. And so they would eat it in haste because this lamb was a lamb of deliverance from death and from slavery. And we'll read more about that in verses 12 and 13. It says, For I will pass through the land of Egypt on that night, and I will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Now the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be on you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. Death was about to pass through the land, but God would spare the houses that had blood on the lintel and on the doorposts. And that death that passed through the land would finally move Pharaoh to release the nation of Israel from Egypt. And so they would be spared from death and they would be freed from slavery because of the death of the lamb. What God did in the Passover was a picture of what was to come. All of us, we were born slaves of sin and of Satan and of death. And there was nothing we could do to free ourselves. But one day a man was standing in the Jordan River, John the Baptist. And he looked up and he pointed at a man and he said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He was pointing to Jesus, the one who had come to die on our behalf, to shed his blood for us so that we could be free from sin and Satan and death. And so the lamb was a picture of Jesus Christ, the coming sacrifice, who was coming to save us from death and to free us from slavery to sin. An Israelite could not casually sin because they knew that if they sinned, a lamb had to die for their sin. And so sin wasn't something that could be taken lightly. And as a follower of Jesus Christ, we cannot casually sin because we know that sin cost Jesus Christ his life, that he had to be nailed to the cross and die on account of our sin. And so we can't just sin casually and say it's no big deal. How can we who have died to sin with Jesus Christ on the cross live in sin anymore? How can we trample the blood of Jesus Christ underfoot and treat it as if it was nothing? We need to resist sin in the power of God's Holy Spirit that he sends, sends to live inside of us so that we can do the things that are pleasing to God and not continue to live in sin. And so knowing the cost of sin, we seek the help of the Holy Spirit to live free from sin and pleasing to God. And so the Passover, the Passover meal that the nation of Israel will be celebrating this Wednesday night to Thursday morning is a picture. It pointed forward to the coming of Jesus Christ. And today we're going to be celebrating a meal, a meal that points backward to the coming of Jesus Christ, a meal that reminds us that he came and shed his blood on our behalf. Today we're celebrating the Lord's Supper, a meal that he instituted during the Passover. I hope this week that you've had the opportunity to gather the elements for the Lord's Supper, to uh, take the bread, to take the cup, and that you have those things available. And so I'd like to read from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 to 26.
1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 to 26. It says, For I receive from the Lord that which I also deliver to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. And so we'll begin celebrating the Lord's Supper by taking bread. And so you may take bread, and as you have the opportunity and are ready, Pastor Jeremy is going to provide us with some music. And as you are prepared in your heart, then you can take this and eat it in remembrance of Jesus Christ. And then we have the cup, a picture of the shed blood of Jesus Christ on our behalf. And so, as you're ready, during this musical interlude that we have, then you may partake of the cup of the new covenant, a picture of his blood that was shed on our behalf so that we can be reconciled to God through faith in him. Well, thank you for your fellowship today. I hope the Lord will richly bless you throughout this coming week as you remember what Jesus Christ has done for us on the cross, shedding his blood as the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And as such, you seek to live in a way that's pleasing to him. Well, we're thankful that we can celebrate communion this morning and remember what Christ has done for us through his dying on the cross and rising again for our sins. And so, as Tom has said, feel free to take those elements whenever um, you feel led and ready uh, spiritually to do so as you celebrate. Uh, I'm going to sing for a few minutes here and invite you to join me if you want, even from the comfort of your couch. Um, and just kind of sing these songs of hope and these songs of proclaiming Christ's work for us. Some of them you'll know, some of them uh, you may know, not know as much, but that's okay. Jump in where you feel comfortable. And no oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fountain. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood. And what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other clouds I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my hope and peace. And this is all my hope and peace And nothing but the blood of Jesus This is all my righteousness Nothing but the blood of Jesus And oh, precious is the flow That makes me white as snow No other I know nothing but 
nothing but the blood of Jesus and no precious is the flow that makes me white as snow no other fount I know nothing but the blood of Jesus Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. His mercy is all. Stronger than darkness, new every morn. Our sins, they are many. His mercy is more. What love could remember No wrongs we have done Omniscient, all-knowing He counts not their sum Thrown into a sea Without bottom or shore Our sins, they are many His mercy is more Praise the Lord Praise the Lord his mercy is more Stronger than darkness We live and mourn Our sins, they are many His mercy is more What riches of kindness? What riches of kindness He lavished on us His blood was the payment his life was the cost We stood neath the dead We could never afford Our sins they are many His mercy is more Praise the Lord His mercy is more In darkness, we live in mourn. Our sins, they are many. His mercy is more. Our sins, they are many. His mercy is more. Yes, our sins, they are many. His mercy is It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise, we pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise to you only. Great are you, Lord. You give life. You give life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise, we pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise to you only. And all the earth, and all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. All the earth will shout your praise. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, 
so much for joining us in worship this morning. We've had a fantastic morning, and we look forward to the week ahead. This week is Holy Week, as we've mentioned already this morning, and on Friday night, we're going to be able to have, or on Friday, we're going to have a devotional available for you so that you can celebrate Good Friday and and, and hear a word from the Psalms, one of the Psalms that Jesus would have uh, sung as he leaves the upper room and he gets ready to go to the cross. And then on Sunday, we invite you to join us back here at 10 a.m. for our live stream next week. If there's any way we can serve you. Uh, on our website, you'll find all of our contact information. Our website is fbczealand.org uh, and get a hold of us if there's any way, both uh, physical or just emotional or prayer support that we can serve you. Uh, one of the best ways for us to be able to connect with you is through our weekly email right now down at the bottom of our website. You'll find a way to sign up for that. Uh, may the Lord bless you today. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up um, his peace towards you. And may you experience the shalom of God today, this day in your life, as you remember and you celebrate what Christ has done for us. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. God bless. Mm-hmm.